Hey, what's up guys? What if I told you that you didn't need Philips Hue or one of those expensive lighting systems to have ambient lighting on your sim rig? You could do it for just 20 bucks. And if you want to know how, I'm going to show you guys right now. All right guys, so as I said in the intro, today I'm going to show you how to build ambient lighting for your sim rig for around $20. Now I'm going to provide some links down in the description. So the first set I'm going to provide is an affiliate link where you can shop for the supplies you're going to need. This is how I was able to do it for around $20. If you choose not to use the affiliate link, totally up to you. It just helps support the channel. But either way, I still recommend buying the parts from Timu. Now you can shop for them elsewhere, but you may not be able to do it for around $20. And that's kind of the goal of this was to do it as cheap as possible. So. Use the affiliate link to support the channel, or don't use it, but definitely check out Timu before you go shopping anywhere else for these parts. You can get them elsewhere. That being said, what you're going to need, you're going to need an Arduino board, you're going to need some LED light strips, and you're going to need a USB power source. The USB power source isn't completely necessary, depending on how many lights you're using, but what I learned is you'll heat up the Arduino board really fast if you try to run off of the 5 volts on the Arduino, so running a separate light cord gives you the option to turn off the power and to be able to save the board and keep it cool while running the lights so I will show you how to split it off the LED lights that we're using they're very specific you need ones that each LED is able to be programmed and used separately if they're all working together then you're gonna end up with all the lights flashing on or off if you're fortunate enough to have it work at all so you definitely want to use the uh, the one that I described down in the description below. The next thing you're going to need that you probably already have is SimHub. This whole system is run off of SimHub's ambient lighting software, which you may not even know is there because it has to be activated. I'll get back to that during the SimHub setup portion of the video. But just know that SimHub does have an ambient lighting option and you're going to need it. And lastly, I'm not a coder. I don't know how to code very well. I know very little about it at all, and I definitely don't have very much experience with Arduino. So I did use the code from Electro Noobs. So I'm gonna put a link down in the description for Electro Noobs and how to get to that process. Uh, it's very straightforward. You upload the library, you copy the code, you adjust the number of LEDs you're using, and what pin on the Arduino board you're using, and the lights work automatically with SimHub, no problem. So let's start by looking at how to connect everything together to get it ready to plug into SimHub. We're going to assume that you've already followed the Electro Noob process and got your board ready. So if you want to follow along, start there, click the link down below, program your board, get it ready for fast LED and everything that it's going to need, and then come back afterwards and go on to the next step in the process. All right, guys, so you'll notice I've cut the main power off of the cord going to the board here. This is the main connector, and as you can see, I've got a ground wire, which is white, that plugs into the Arduino ground. And the green wire, which is the DIN, I've got in port D6. In Electro Noobs, it says D7. You can use either one. You just need to make sure you adjust for it in the code. Now, this is the USB power cord that I'll be using, and these are the connectors that I'll run in between all the sources. And I did want to use heat shrink and solder all these wires together, but my heat shrink that was the right size didn't arrive in time. So I went ahead and just did hard connections and I can always go back and redo this if I ever need to, but because of how I've taped it all together at this point, there's no reason to do that. Now, some there are gonna be some redundancies in this video so that I can make sure there's a clear understanding, but Ultimately, you're just connecting and maintaining continuity of a positive and a ground through the secondary power source, and then your DIN and a ground through the main plug. The reason you don't want to put them together and you want to make sure that you don't connect the hot wire to the Arduino board is that your board will start to get hot. You could end up burning it up. So as you can see, it's just 
separating out the pins. If you have just a little bit of electrical knowledge, you could pretty much figure out where this is going and how it splits off. But I will also show it all connected. Now you'll notice I'm removing either the red wires or the green wires based on which section I'm doing. Absolutely not necessary, again, as long as you connect the right wires and choose not to connect the wires that are not needed. This is more of the same situation. I don't need those DIN wires because this connector is going to be used for the power. And the only reason I'm using so many connectors is just to have the option to adjust if needed. You can hardwire the whole thing if you have a if you already know you have a permanent setup and this is how you're going to leave it. So as you can see, the ground and the DIN go into one section and now we've got a positive and a negative going to the other section. Here's our two ports. There should be a USB cable connected to that. So you'll have two USB cables. They'll run all the way down and both sections independently connect back into the lighting source. All right guys, so like I said, there's gonna be some redundancy with my explanations, but I wanna make sure I'm extra clear on how this is put together so there's no confusion. So as you can see right here, this is the main power cable that runs straight up to the lights up here. Right here we have the Arduino board with just the ground and the D6 pin activated. That's all it takes to control the lights. Then, don't mind my cardboard mess. That's part of my next project or one that I have upcoming. As you can see, all the lights underneath are active. I do have an extra bar under there that is not controlled by the Arduino board. And that is just to make sure I can have extra lighting if I'm filming. And it is controlled by the app, so I can shut that off anytime. But as you can see, the two leads do run around back here up back into there and to power that board right there. All right guys, now I'm gonna talk about how we set this up in SimHub. So the first thing you gotta do because there's a good chance it's not already done is go to your settings, click on your plugins up here and make sure you activate your ambient lighting. Then from ambient lighting, you'll notice there's a lot of different options on here. It takes some playing around with but you're gonna to wanna to figure out what comm your Arduino board's plugged into, how many lights you're gonna use from it. In the preview section and edit LED layout here, that's where you'll break up your lights. So I have one bar going 18 across. Those are the two sides. So that gives me that additional lighting when the, I get light through my left or right window. And then the main lighting throughout the whole cabin is my 60 LEDs across the bottom. So those are adjusted based on the screen play and everything, depending on your screen and how you set everything up, you may have to tweak it and adjust it. Personally, I'll just share with you guys what I did with mine. I, my sides are almost all the way out to the borders. And keep in mind, if you're running triples, this is the entire, this equates for the entire triple screen, even though it looks like only one screen. So you're gonna be all the way out to the sides. In fact, if you look right here, you can see it shows all three screens and you get a pretty good idea of where your lights are being picked up from. So my bottom, I tried to run it as close to the dash as I possibly could. That way it would detect light coming into the car. Um, there's different margins. Basically, each one of these will adjust your boxes. Um, just play around with it. You always want to know where you're starting from. And depending on how you lay out your lights, what you do with them, it's going to change all those settings. And it's not too hard to kind of dial it in and figure it out. What I did is I put the game on replay mode and brought up SimHub while the replay was running and just adjusted it with all the shadows and everything until I felt like it felt right. So even your gamma correction, that's 
gonna come down to you know how far away your lights are and everything and mine might need to be tweaked again because I just raised my lights up um, you have a dark mode a light mode and basically all this can be adjusted and tweaked until you just get the right effect for your rig there is also an option for Bluetooth lighting personally I tried several different Bluetooth lights to get this to work because of the connectivity and everything I just felt like it wasn't working or wouldn't stay connected and I ended up just giving up on it. Alright guys, here's a fun way to test the uh, activation of those lights. If you take like a white box, like one of your file boxes, something really bright, and you'll see up here, as I come across the left hand side here, you'll see those lights start to get brighter. And then as I drop down, you can actually follow the lighting until you get to the left side where you'll see it all comes together down here on the left. So kind of a good way to make sure all your lights are working properly. All right guys, so hopefully that was a pretty straightforward explanation. Like I said, make sure you run a replay of one of your races and open up SimHub and you can really dial in the details of it. Make sure that, that way you like, you know when you're going through shadows, your lights are cutting in and out. Just gives you that ability to like real time feedback, run the game, run the simulation, see the lights and adjust as needed. You can go back and rerun the same sections and it should, re once you get it to react the way you want it to, then it's just some fine tuning from there. There's no exact science behind it. It is a little bit challenging, but it's nothing that you guys can't handle. If I was unclear on anything in this video, leave me a comment down below. I'll be happy to help you out. I always respond to my comments, but I think this will be a big help for a lot of people because I know it's not information that's super easy to find. Now, I know I said that this week I was actually gonna dig into some of the other things on the rig, but because of a post on Facebook, I felt like this just had to happen quick because a lot of people wanted to know how this worked. So next week, we'll dig into the rig. And the week after that, I've got a really exciting button box build I'm going to do that I think will top just about all button boxes. I've got a 7-inch screen integration that's going to go into the box. So my SIM hub is going to run on a 7-inch screen built into my button box and ultimately for less than 50 bucks, I think I'm gonna have one of the dopest button boxes ever made. And that's when you compare to some of the ones out there that are going for three, 400 bucks. And I still think I'm gonna top that on a $50 build. So definitely stick around for that because that's gonna be insane. Um, I'll see you guys next week. And I'll leave you with the full lap with lighting from today's video. Oh, <laughs>